Can you imagine waking up one night high above the ground, flying east at 1,000 miles per hour, dodging a bank coming after you, and holding a mortally terrified cat in your arms while a gym guy screams in panic? Alexa, what's going on? Well, if Alexa could give a flying start to your new circumstances, she would say that the Earth has stopped spinning, causing every single thing and being to fly at the speed of the Earth's previous motion. That's just the beginning of what would happen if the Earth somehow came to a halt. Do you want to know about the new mega continent that would form around the Earth's belt and the mutations of the moon that would trigger the Earth's new rotation? Then watch to the end what happens when our home stops spinning. And don't forget to support our new channel by sharing, commenting, and or subscribing. But first, a disclaimer, so you don't go hiding into an underground bunker after watching our story. The following global catastrophe scenario is only a thought experiment, which means that the chances of this becoming a reality is rather slim. Still, I hear you say, sometimes slim is enough. You are right about that. And to prepare for the hypothetical situation that will probably never come about, we imagined what would happen if all the right variables came together and our hypothesis became true. In scientific circles, this kind of thinking is called a thought experiment. A thought experiment is merely an experiment you conduct in your mind because the premises are so far removed from known reality that they can never occur unless something extraordinary intervenes. In our case, we are talking about another planet of equal or greater size appearing out of nowhere and hitting the Earth. Another possibility is that the 4D aliens, if they exist, use their superior technology and destroy Earth to build their civilization or grow something. In any case, there is not much we can do about it except accept the fate that makes us brothers, as the wise saying goes. Let's now return to the point where you are miraculously alive and flying eastward at tremendous speed with air, water, and rocks by your side, while the oceans advance 17 miles, that's 28 kilometers, inland, in just 60 seconds. You may wonder why you are not being hurled into the black, cold, peaceful universe. Sorry, but gravity has a grip on us Earthlings and keeps us here no matter what happens to Earth. And the reason you are flying left at 1,100 miles per hour, or 1,770 kilometers an hour, the current speed of the Earth's rotation, is because of the law of conservation of energy, which ensures that the atmosphere continues to move even after the Earth has come to a stop. In order to stop something from spinning, you must exert the same force in the direction of the spinning object. The hard truth is, to survive the catastrophe that would seal Earth's hospitality and make it uninhabitable for all eternity, you would have to know about it, prepare in advance, and stay very close to the poles, or hide in an underground bunker. And even that would not get you very far. Once you are exposed to the open sun and cosmic radiation, who knows what your last thoughts would be? On the bright side, you may be wearing a protective micro-quantum suit at the time of impact that wraps tightly around your body allowing you to fly around the globe with everything else and enjoy the ride. As you move through the air, protected from wild speeds, you can see easterly winds collide with westerly winds, creating massive and vortices the size of entire continents. The same would happen with the winds in the direction of the poles. If you look down, you see moving rocks and oceans trigger earthquakes and tsunamis that play with the Earth like Picasso. You witness the formation of a huge megacontinent around the Earth on the equatorial plain surrounded by two massive oceans that spread out to the south and north poles. To you, they look like deep blue wormholes. As you keep spinning around the Earth, Canada, Scandinavia, and Great Britain go underwater. Oh no, at least Spain stays above water. But the sun only rises once a year, and that's in the west. What a great holiday would be the day you see the sun after six months of polar ice winter with the stars always in the same place. It is not necessarily bad if the stars are always in the same place. You can spot more movement among them and maybe signal an alien ship to rescue you from the totally destroyed planet. Where you once worried about what to wear to a job interview and whether to buy California or Texas tomatoes. All the problems and worries just disappear when you learn the ultimate secret. It's all about surviving and not losing your grip. Thus, it would be best if you continue to move in a thin zone around the Earth, still orbiting the sun so you wouldn't always be in the same place and personally meet every sunrise and sunset. Because on the other side of the six-month polar ice night is an incomparably hot six-month day that you could not survive above ground and outdoors. Yes, maybe you could manage to live as a yogi at the transition of day and night by meditating with your belly. Well, at best until you are burned by the uncontrollable sun and cosmic rays. The Earth is indeed a well-tuned organism, a complex structure of interdependent ecosystems upon which alone human existence is completely dependent. 
And to better understand how it works, let's now take a leap back in time to see how the Earth's spinning shaped its appearance. For billions of years, the Earth's rotation has gradually slowed so that the length of a day increases by about 1.8 milliseconds per century. This is the reason why we have to advance our clocks by an extra second about every 500 days, in case you were wondering. When the Earth spun faster long ago, it had a larger bulge around the equator, and likewise billions of years in the future, the slower Earth will have a similar bulge and therefore be more like a sphere. Today, the diameter of the Earth at the equator is about 21.4 kilometers larger than the diameter at the Earth's poles. This variation would have dramatic consequences if the Earth suddenly stopped rotating on its axis. It is exactly what would lead to the formation of the new equatorial mega-continent as all the water disappears from the equator and moves towards the poles, pulled away by gravity, which is stronger at the poles, causing the new land to rise from the ocean floor. Two vast oceans would kiss each other on the new continent, perhaps called Equatoria. But they would not be equal in size because the underwater basins are of different lengths. The level of the Southern Ocean would be about 1.4 kilometers below that of the new Northern Sea. To get a more accurate picture, simply follow the US-Canada border and leave Greenland and the Northern Plains of Siberia, Asia, and Europe, as well as all of Antarctica, underwater. Meanwhile, the new Southern Ocean begins roughly on a line that runs through present-day Canberra, where Africa merges with Madagascar and Australia with New Guinea and Indonesia. This certainly gives geopolitical science a disparate perspective. However, the same quantum net of cosmic interdependence triggers completely different adjustments on the lunar surface. You probably already know about innumerable forces on and off the Earth that pull on and influence the Earth's rotation. But do you know what is by far the most important and constant of these forces? Yes, it is our natural satellite, the Moon. Now, take a look at what's happening there. You'll be blown away. The Moon's gravitational pull creates a slight dent in the solid surface of the Earth, near but not exactly below where the Moon is. The difference then creates a torque on the Earth and the Moon, causing the Earth to slow down while the Moon moves slightly away from the Earth, at a rate of about one and a half centimeters per year. This means that 1.4 billion years ago, a day lasted only 18 hours and 42 minutes, and the Moon was about 27,000 miles closer to Earth. In other words, the Earth's rotation is slowing down and the Moon's orbit is expanding. And if nothing else intervenes, the Earth and Moon will eventually become tidally locked, making the length of a day and the length of a month the same. Wouldn't that mess up your schedule? But if the Earth didn't rotate, this effect would reverse. The Moon would move toward the Earth, and the Earth would slowly begin to rotate again. The Moon's orbit would decrease again until the two were tidally locked. Fatally, the Moon would continue to move toward the Earth until it either collided with it, or the Earth's gravity tore the Moon apart. What a romance! Luckily, in our lifetime, the only thing that could stop the Earth's rotation, apart from extraterrestrial technology, would be if another planet crashed into us. And even if this were to happen, it is more likely that the Earth's rotation would change than that it would stop completely. But if the Earth were to gradually stop, that would be a whole different story. Don't forget to support our new channel by sharing, commenting, and or subscribing.